There are no predefined set of rules or benchmarks to officially state any country as a superpower. But we can say that a country which has the ability to project its power on global scale could be called as a superpower. This power projection could be in terms of economy, military, technology, diplomatic, and even soft power. After the end of World War II, US and the USSR were the two superpowers. Both had capabilities to project their power on global scale. But after the fall of Soviet Union in 1991, U.S. was the only superpower in the world. U.S. is far superior in terms of economy, military, technology and even diplomatically, and it will also be for more at least couple of decades. Yet there are some nations which have capabilities to be the next superpower. So let's look at them. Let's start with the European Union. European Union is a combination of 28 different countries in Europe. Although EU is not a single country, but still it drives solid economic powers. In 2019 GDP of European Union was around $18.3 trillion, which was slightly less than United States $21.4 trillion. EU also has a lot of advantage over others, like low inflation rate, high population, large economy, and a high quality of life. Also European Union nations like France, UK and Germany have some of the advanced militaries. And most of the countries of EU are the part of NATO alliance. After the weak foreign policies of US under the current US president, world is looking towards the European Union for leadership. Yet EU is also facing problems like Brexit and economic slowdown due to COVID-19 pandemic. As European Union is not a singular country, so there are always some internal politics even after same foreign and defense policies. In the future even if Britain leaves EU it will remain a strong contender for next economic superpower. Next is China. Today China is second most powerful nation in terms of economy and military. China has gone through massive economic growth in past 40 years. Due to large skilled population and good infrastructure, China has emerged as a manufacturing hub. And because of this manufacturing industry, China became an export-driven economy. So due to its economic growth China is now able to project its power beyond their territories. We can see China's influence in Asia Africa and Europe through their Belt and Road Initiative projects. Yet the massive economic growth has made China second most powerful military in the world. China has also built its first overseas military base in Djibouti which shows that China is trying to create influence on a global level. But still China is very far from the title of a superpower country. As China's economy is still struggling a lot from past few years. This is due to trade war and now the COVID-19 pandemic. Even though military spending of China is increasing from past decade, it is far behind the US. According to some experts China will surpass US economy in 2030s. But COVID-19 pandemic and the new Cold War between US and China puts questions on this. Now comes India. India is the world's second most populous country and is expected to see massive growth over the next three decades. India is expected to grow nearly 5% per year in terms of GDP. And this could make India one of the fastest growing economies. India is also having advantage because of its younger population. An Indian culture is already very famous in the world. So India's soft power could help them grow their influence globally. Apart from this India has one of the strongest military. Similar to China India is also increasing its defense budget from last 10 years. And has a overseas air force base in Tajikistan. India has improved its global reputation in last decade. And is also a contender for a permanent seat in United Nations Security Council. But before becoming a superpower India has to overcome a lot of challenges. Like high economic inequality, corruption, religious issues, law enforcement, and poor infrastructure. Even after becoming the fifth largest economy, India is still an agriculture-driven society. More than 50% of India's workforce is in agriculture sector. This is a good thing but India needs to boost its industrial sector for economic growth. Although after COVID-19 pandemic the world is looking for an alternative for China. And India could seize this opportunity. So, India is a strong contender in this race. 
But there are a lot of things that India need to change for being a superpower. Now let's head towards Japan. In the 1980s many political and economic analysts predicted that Japan would eventually accede to superpower status. And expectations were that it would surpass the economy of United States. This was due to its large population, huge GDP, and high economic growth at that time. But Japan is facing a weak growth since the lost decade of the 1990s. From 1991 to 2003, the Japanese economy grew only 1.14% per year in terms of GDP. And that was less compared to other industrialized nations. Because of this slowdown Japan lost its economic superpower goal. Aging population is a major concern for Japan. Also military capabilities of the Japan Self-Defense Forces are held back by the pacifist 1947 constitution. So power projection through its military is not possible for Japan. But because of rise of rivals like as China and North Korea, Japanese pacifist policy could be changed in the future. If that happens then Japan could rise as a superpower. Next is Brazil. With an abundance of natural resources Brazil has grown its economy rapidly in the past few decades. Brazil is one of the world's giants for mining, agriculture, and manufacturing. And it has a strong and rapidly growing service sector. Brazil has almost untouched strategic natural resources including valuable minerals. It also has a tenth of the world's fresh water and Earth's largest remaining rainforest. Because of this Brazil could gain a dominant role in international relations. Especially when it comes to environmental issues. This soft power influence could be further enhanced by Brazil's policy makers. And seek to engage in as many international organizations as possible. They could also form alliances. Most notably on social, diplomatic, and economic issues. But Brazil lacks in traditional hard power like military and global security influence. They also suffer from challenges like government corruption and inflation. So because of this Brazil falls far short for being a superpower. Let's get to Russia now. The Russian Federation has been suggested as a potential candidate for resuming superpower status in the 21st century. After the fall of USSR, Russia has gone through a massive economic growth. They had undergone a radical transformation, moving from a centrally planned economy to a globally integrated market economy. Some sources are estimating that Russia contains over 30% of the world's natural resources. Also as per some experts they will get advantage from climate changes. Because today two-third of Russia's land mass is covered with permafrost. Permafrost is a ground that continuously remains frozen for years. And due to rise in Earth's temperature this permafrost is melting. So, the absence of this permafrost would reveal immense stores of oil natural gas and precious minerals. And also some potential farmland. This would allow Russia to become the world's bread basket and control the planet's food supply. But even after these advantages, Russia is facing problems like shrinking population, high levels of poverty, and poor public health. Russia also lack in power projection through its military. This is because of lack in combination of economic and military power. So it seems like for a couple of decades Russia could not get a title of a superpower. Thailand and Vietnam. These two Southeast Asian countries has shown incredible economic growth in past decade. Most of the international companies shifting from China are considering Vietnam and Thailand for manufacturing. Because of this economic growth has increased tremendously in these countries. But these countries do not have military power. They also don't have any influence in the world politics. So these countries could rise as economic superpowers and not traditional superpowers. So as we have seen above, all these countries have the potential of being a superpower. But only if they fill the limitations. Now which country you think can be the next superpower? Let us know in the comment section below. And we are glad you watched the full video. Please hit the subscribe button and give this video a like. Thank you.